Hi, this is Michael Edwards, Assistant Professor of Medicine at UC Denver, specializing in bioinformatics. This is part one of the IPA tutorial. This was done in conjunction with the AACR workshop. Um, so for this first tutorial, what I'll go over is importing data into IPA. Uh, what we're going to do is import a list of genes that were different between two different types of lymphoma, one uh, more aggressive than the other. This was an RNA-seq study done with 748 transcripts. So how do we download this into IPA? Uh, this is the IPA window. If we want to do a new analysis, we're just going to click on this box on the left, New. So I'm going to put New Core Analysis. OK, this window will come up. Uh, you can reanalyze any old data sets, but I want to download our gene list that you should have saved on your computer. So we hit Upload. I left this on the desktop. Double click that. So right now, the cell file is loaded into IPA. Now we just got to tell it what the uh, different categories are. Uh, this is our ID here. So I'm going to put ID. These are our official gene symbols. And sure enough, this software will actually recognize that. Um, but you can tell it whatever, if it's affymetrics, if it's entry gene names, uh, official names, whatever. So now we've told the software what the transcripts are or at least the column that'll identify them. Now let's go to our p-values here. That's observation one. OK, now there is full change information. If we go all the way to the end, we should see that. Full change right here. Or log full change. Let's go log full change, observation one. And this goes log ratio. So it actually, based on the numbers that you put in, the software will, act, will uh, offer a guess, and usually it's right. So again, you're putting observation one for both of those. That was a p-value and a log ratio that are attached to this particular transcript. So I'm going to hit Save and Create Analysis. Save. Oh. I'm going to save it as something else. So I'm going to go RNA-seq ABC versus GBC. So this is activated B cell like versus germinal cell B or B cell like. Hit save. Uh, so what it's doing now is it's 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 importing these software and, and basically tying our identifier to its its knowledge base. So this is the ana analysis window. This will come up, and this gives you very uh, several options. You can use, you know, populate, you know, what data sets you'd like to use. Um, put uh, limits on your networks that it's going to generate for you. And I think this is really interesting. Well, you can do species if you just only want to look at those genes associated with, say, mouse. But they have this tissue and cell lines. So what you can do is you can actually limit your list, or at least the analysis from your list, based on only those genes that are known to be expressed in a particular cell type. And say you have a tissue and you're interested in the immune system, which would be, again, you can pick any of these, a particular tissue, uh, immune cell lines, you can do different cell lines, but this can be very uh, a very useful tool if you have if your uh, array experiment involves uh, tissue with multiple cell types. You can uh, potentially kind of div divvy the transcriptome up and hopefully look for only those that are associated with what, what uh, you're interested in. Um, I'm going to hit the save the defaults for all this. Uh, P-values you can do any cutoffs. So our list was generated using a false discovery rate, less than 5%. Uh, I could set this for anything I wanted. Uh, log ratio, I could just look at those that are upregulated or downregulated. Uh, down here is the summary of the list that you've imported. So we've had 748 originally. 
Uh, the software is able to map 680. That means that they're characterized transcripts. This also uh, eliminates the redundant genes in, in many uh, gene lists. So you'll, what you'll, normally the gene list that you put in will actually be shorter than what you, uh, the gene list you analyze will be shorter than what you put in. And this is the unmapped IDs, and this will give you all the identifiers for those. And then analysis ready. So it's going to use 680 genes for analysis. I'm going to hit run analysis. Uh, you can save it in any project you want. We could create a new one. I've already created one for the workshop, so I'm going to save it here. Hit OK. And so now, obviously, all these genes have biological information that's um, in the database. So the software is is basically tying that and making the networks, looking for overrepresented pathways, um, uh, biological units, uh, upstream regulators. So this takes a while. So when this is done, this takes usually takes about anywhere from three to five minutes. Uh, this will become bold, and that will mean that it's ready. But I already actually have one, so I'm going to just click it. This is the page you're going to see once your analysis is done. So in the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is, on this list that we've imported, I'm going to examine it using the IPA software. I'm going to look at how do we look for overrepresented uh, pathways, uh, disease and functions, talk about upstream regulators, how we can go beyond all this and create our own networks, which is are these tabs all up here. And then how do we take all of this data and make a kind of a skeleton of, of what this uh, transcriptome looks like. And this is the regulatory effects. How do we tie these things to biological units? So in the next tutorial, uh, we'll go over canonical pathways. Thanks.